My sister got the car. A 1970 Lincoln Continental, painted slate gray in pristine shape. I got a CB radio. The saddest day of my life was when my parents sat my sister Jeanette and I down and broke the news. Our grandfather had died of a stroke sometime during the previous night. Jeanette sat stone-faced and stoic. She was well into her terrible teens and showed emotion differently. But tears could not so easily hide from my eyes. Billy, my mother said with a soft affection and cracked voice. I promise you, he is in a better place. He's watching us now. Her hands smoothed my back and I sobbed into her shoulder. The words were meant to give solace, but all I thought of was how, wherever he was, I would never see or speak to him in this life again. Pictures of him flashed in my mind, his hand on my shoulder, guiding me on my first bike ride without training wheels, camping trips in the Sonoran woods, where he taught me to fish and understand Morse code. But the mental picture that stuck out the most was him seated in his beat-up love seat, slacks pulled up well past his waist, nose buried in some Dean Kuntz book, asking about my day. I would never see him on that chair again. My grandfather had spent the last 12 years in an old folks home and pretty much had zilch in the way of material wealth, aside from a few meager possessions and his continental. So I wasn't disappointed when I'd learned I had been bequeathed his CB radio. That is, until I heard Jeanette, no tears, stone-faced Jeanette, had been given his car. I'm ashamed to admit that when I received that crummy, taped cardboard box carrying the radio inside, I threw it in my closet in anger. I was only 14 and had never even so much as started a car. But it was the thought of Jeanette, perpetually sour, who hardly even acknowledged my existence and gave my grandfather so little attention in these last years, had been given his most valuable possession. Time tempers all wounds, and my anger was short-lived. At the end of it all, I missed my grandfather, and that couldn't be tarnished by any disappointment. He was buried a week later, beside my grandmother. Two months after he had passed, I finally took the cardboard box out of the closet. The radio was short, gray, and rectangular. It had a bunch of dials. I didn't know how to work. I couldn't make head nor tails of how to use this machine. So I dug my hands back in the cardboard box, thinking maybe my grandfather had left an instruction manual or something. What I found was treasure an envelope addressed to me with a note inside. Billy, if you're reading this, now you know what that means. I love your mother, and your sister was my first grandchild. That's a very special thing. But you have been my favorite since the first day I saw you in that delivery room. One of my greatest memories is the first time I held you in my arms. You wrapped your little fingers around my hand and gurgled. I didn't even care when you spat up on me because you were smiling. There are two highlights in my life. The first was marrying your grandmother. You only know her from the stories your mother and I have told. Let me say this, Billy. No story comes close to the reality of the precious time I spent with her. The second highlight of my life was every minute I ever spent with you. You were more than my grandson. You were my best friend. I am sad that I won't get to watch you grow or see you get married, hold my great-grandchild. I wish I could have said goodbye to you properly. 
I hope to God there's a heaven above where I can watch over you. The radio, well, CB radios aren't exactly user-friendly, Billy, but I am sure in time you will get the hang of it. This Cobra model comes equipped with a battery and a built-in antenna. I have already adjusted the frequency, so all you have to do is switch the far left dial clockwise to power it up. Try not to get into too much trouble. I love you, Grandpa. P.S. Press the button on the left side of the mic to talk, and the button on the right side to send out more signals. I know you haven't forgotten how Morse works. When I finished reading the letter, I was in tears. Every word written was more precious to me than any Lincoln Continental. Jeanette could have a world of them, and I was fine with that. I had a goodbye and my grandfather's love. After a few minutes of letting the waterworks die down, I turned back to the radio and switched the dial on the left. It sounded like one of those old handheld radio sets tuned to a frequency between AM stations. I quickly learned I could change the channel by turning the far right module, or just by clicking the little button that said Seek, which would cycle quickly through the 40 available channels until it found one in use. Want to give Leanne a call then? She gives a real mean hummer. A distorted voice spoke from the speaker. An equally garbled voice replied, I won't be in Gaines for a month at least, but... I'll give her a ring when I come round, that's for sure. I picked up my mic and pressed down on the button to the left. What's a hummer? Get off this frequency, kid. It's in use, said the first voice very angrily. The second one was laughing, distorted, garbled chortles in the background. I made a mental note to ask my dad what a hummer was before I clicked the seek button again. But there was no other action. Bored, I switched the set off and lay down to sleep. I awoke to the sound of my alarm, which was strange since it was 3.45 in the morning and I hadn't set it to go off that early. The fog began to lift from my mind as I was forced up, unable to ignore it and drift back to sleep. That wasn't my alarm tone. The same pattern of beeping noises repeated over and over again as I pulled myself up slowly from my bed and made my way to the source, which glowed light blue at the end of my room. Funny, I thought. Didn't I turn you off? I didn't give it any further thought, however, still groggy and desperate to get back under the lulling warmth of my covers. I switched the CB off and went quickly back to bed. It's funny how quickly life can take on some normalcy after an event so devastating. It had been three months since my grandfather had died, and though I still felt the pains of sadness when I thought of him, it was less and less frequent. Instead, my focus turned back to girls in my class, playing computer games with my friends, television and homework. It was as if my grandfather had never existed. The CB radio had gone untouched in all that time. The night of the next occurrence, I was up late reading the Langoliers on my tablet in the appropriate darkness of my room. My parents had gone out to some dinner party and Jeanette, well, she lived here in name only. I was at the part of the book where Mr. Toomey was running around the airport, head bashed in and in a crazed state when I noticed that my tablet's glow wasn't the only source of dim illumination. Looking up, I saw that the CB radio had been powered on. What the hell? I thought, as I got up from my bed. I came to the immediate conclusion that the thing must be broken, as the beeping pattern kept repeating. Wait! It hit me fast then. All the lessons my grandfather had given me over the course of years came rushing back. These weren't random bleeps and bloops. This was a message. Miss. 
You. I stood frozen in front of the set. Someone must be playing some sort of trick on me. My mind immediately rationalized. But underneath the easy comfort that that explanation gave me, I was terrified. The message kept repeating, over and over again, until in nervous desperation, I picked up the microphone and spoke. Very funny, I said in a faux firm voice that cracked round its facade. I continued, but the joke is over and you should really stop now. It didn't. Again and again the same message came passing through. Miss you. Miss you. Miss you. Miss you. I switched the radio off, but its glow remained, and so did the ceaseless messages. What could I do? I couldn't call the police. I would sound absolutely insane. And the thought of breaking the machine would never occur to me. It was my grandfather's last gift after all. So I spoke again. Who is this? Why are you doing this? To my surprise, the message changed briefly. I really wish it hadn't. Grandpa. Miss you. I could not move. I could not think. All I could do was stand paralyzed by an insurmountable fear. I had often wished before that day for just one more time with my grandfather. One more chat. One more opportunity to say I love you. The thoughts would bring in me a bittersweet feeling. In theory it would have been amazing, but in reality it was beyond ghastly. I didn't doubt the reality of the moment. I knew innately that my attempt to rationalize this as some prank didn't gel with what my constricted heart felt all too clearly. This was happening. I zoned out in that state of dumbstruck horror as the messages repeated again and again. After a minute, I came to. Grandpa, where are you? I really shouldn't have asked. Front? My heart sunk. Door. The messages stopped. I felt on the verge of passing out, but was able to hang on to consciousness out of fear of what might happen to me while I was passed out. There was silence for what seemed like forever. I began to breathe again. Too soon. I didn't have to investigate to know that those sounds were coming from outside of my front door. I couldn't have investigated either way. With tears in my eyes, I felt my horror rise to a level I never thought possible. Here I was, alone at home, being tormented by a ghoul, an actual ghoul, not just a figurative one. And the worst part was, he's my grandfather. The scrapes and taps continued, but that word running through my head had an instant effect on me. The Morse code on the door became muted as my mind remembered him sitting there on his favorite chair and asking me about my day with a genuine interest. In my memories, I felt his arm balance me as I attempted not to crash on my first big boy bike ride. I recalled seeing his face take on a youthful glow each time he spoke of my grandma. He was always there for me. My grandfather loved me. 
I was still crying, but they were different tears now. Not ones of terror, but sadness. I knew what to do. Grandpa, I spoke into the CB microphone. I miss you too. I was boiling now, but also feeling some relief to have been given this moment. As if terror had never been present at all. But you need to go now. You need to go and be with Grandma. The noise has slowed. You never got a chance to say goodbye. I didn't either. It's the thing I've wanted more than anything since you left us. I love you, Grandpa. I love you. I will see you again. I know this. I can't wait to tell you all about my life when I do. The noise has stopped. I stood in breathless silence for what seemed like an eternity. And when I realized there would be no more messages to come, I cried both in relief and in sadness. But a part of me was happy too. I had gotten that one last time with him. I don't know when I passed out that night and the next day would have felt like a dream if it hadn't been for the phone call. We were all sitting around the table, eating our breakfast. Or I was trying to. I still felt very strange. When the phone rang. No, no, honey, I'll get it, my father said to my mother as he stood up and walked to the phone. Hello? Yes? Mm Mm-hmm. He looked at Mom with a screwed up face. Finally, after an eternity of listening to the other end of the line, he said, All right, thank you very much for letting us know. What was it, honey? My mom asked, concerned. He just sat there a moment and looked around at all of us. Um, well, that was the police. They said that someone had been disturbing your father's grave. The, uh, the soil was dug up. My mother's eyes grew wide and her mouth hung open. Honey, it's okay. The officer told us the body wasn't tampered with, but, um, well, this is strange. They... They found a handheld CB radio in the casket. My father didn't know what to say. My sister was intrigued and my mother was appalled. But I was strangely content while I feigned an alarmed face. That day, I boxed up the CB radio, like I said before. I would never get rid of my grandfather's last gift to me, but I could sure as hell store it in the garage as far away from myself as possible. I was about to turn the doorknob and head back in the house when I heard it for the last time. With Grandma. With tears in my eyes, I smiled and stepped inside.